All right, that's West 47th Street, Manhattan, Midtown High School, Assistant Principal, Mr. Jarvis. Uh, yeah, it is regarding a, a 10th grade girl, Laura Kirk. Yes, and if you would tell Mr. Jarvis that I will be there shortly. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Well, perfect timing. New York City? Yep. Um... You know what? You are my most reliable volunteer. I'm only going to be gone a couple of hours, so uh, it's all yours. You mind if I ask why? I mean, what is it that you hope to gain by following this girl all the way to New York? Information, of course. I already explained that to I you. I understand. I do. You are concerned about every homeless person that walks through these doors, Brooke. But this one. This one is different. I need to know what happened to her, and I want to make sure that she's okay. Why can't you let it go? Why should I let it go? I mean, what is wrong with being concerned about a, a, a runaway homeless girl who is out there who has nobody to turn there to? There is nothing wrong. There is absolutely nothing wrong unless Adam is right. You're starting to obsess about a girl named Laura, and that's not good for you. Going to New York to get some information on a homeless runaway girl who was assaulted in the shelter is not what I would call an obsession. And what would you call it? Well, I don't know. I guess I would call it a moral obligation. You know, I would like to make sure that this girl is safe, that she's okay, that she's off the streets. And you think she went back to her school? I think it's a start, all right? I could find out about any friends, any teachers, anybody well, that she's had contact well, Brooke, with. Brooke, you can do that through the telephone. I think in person is better. Look, this is the list of the inventory, okay? There you go. Look, just because this girl blames you for the assault does not mean that you are personally responsible for Laura Kirk. It is not what this is about. I am following through on something that matters. Kids matter. All kids. Yes, I agree with you. You're absolutely right. But why this particular one? I, I can't explain. Explain it. Haven't you ever had somebody come into your life, even briefly, and touch you in a particular way so that made time you, you couldn't stop thinking about them? I... Yes. Yes, I have. There was a young girl that used to come to my church. I think it was a few years after Laura was killed. I never knew her name. She was probably 10 or 11 years old. She had ash blonde hair and gray eyes. And she sang in the choir like an angel. And every Sunday, I looked forward to this little girl coming to my church. And she reminded me so much of Laura that it hurt. I am not trying to substitute this runaway girl for our daughter. If this Laura has nothing to do with our Laura, then why can you not stop thinking about her and why do you have to find her? Why can't you leave it alone? Okay, maybe there is something in me that's responding to this girl because because her name is Laura, because she reminds me of our Laura. Who would have been about the same age had she lived. Yes. You know, but there are women here at the shelter who remind me of my mother. You know, and I, I have gone out of my way to find out what's happened, to see if I can help them. So what does that mean, Tom, that now I'm obsessing about my mother? I, I don't know. What I do know is that nurturing comes naturally to you. You're a very warm, caring, and loving person. Oh, so it's my maternal instincts that are kicking in now, right? Maybe. Well, wrong. I mean, what about Jamie, hmm? Dr. Freud? I have a child, all right? I have a child, so my maternal instincts are right on track. Thank you very much. Well, I'm not accusing you. There are no holes here. There are no spaces that need to be filled. I'm merely following up on this young woman because she's touched me in a way that I cannot dismiss. I mean, isn't that what you and I and anybody else who volunteers here 
tries to get across that the, the homeless are not some faceless, anonymous group of people. They are individuals. They are people that we help one at a time. And that is the only thing that I am trying to do. Okay. I believe you. Thanks. So now do I have permission to go to uh, New York City? As if you ever needed my permission to do anything at all. All right, listen, thank you. Um, I think everything that you need is there. And uh, I'll see you later. Okay? All right. Laura's mother died in a fire? Uh, smoke inhalation. Quick and merciful, they said. No one's seen the child since. Well, there must have been some sort of follow-up, wasn't there? <laughs> Certainly. The bureaucracy excels in creating paper trails, but the problem is, except for her mother, Laura Kirk had no family. According to the official records, Mrs. Kirk had no next of kin, and Laura's father was listed as unknown. I see. Uh, social services arrange for temporary housing at several SRO hotels. That's single room occupancy uh, around the city. Ending at the Princess eight months ago until the fire when Laura disappeared. Oh. Excuse me. Hello? What I need, you never even heard of. Please, just tell me what you need. <gasps> I have been running my mouth stiff buds like you since I've been in diapers, and I am through. Just tell me what you need because I want to help make it better, please. Drop dead, you fake. I'm sorry about that. Uh, other than the printouts of low attendance record, I have no other information. However, if she returns in the fall, or if social services finds her and gets in touch, I'll be glad to let you know. All right, thank you. I appreciate that, Mr. Jarvis. This is my card. Um, did Laura have a locker? Hmm. Yes. In fact, it's due to be cleaned and assigned to a summer school student. Uh, this may seem like an odd request, Mr. Jarvis, but could I take a look? Green valleys with rustling pines and crystal clean air. A place to be happy. A place 